My name is Marjorie Johnson, and I'm the educator at the Welland Museum. Today, I will be talking about art and windows. The Welland has fantastic windows. It's one of the things that made me fall in love with the place when I first visited there. My office window is a vast panoramic pane of glass on the second floor, unbroken by any mullions or framing dividers, like a big screen TV for the weather. Windows are the way we are connecting with each other these days. Be it the windows on our computer screens or in our homes, we've been able to stay in touch, waving and saying hello, through windows. On daily walks, I look forward to seeing the signs, teddy bears, and rainbows that people are putting in their windows to offer encouragement and joy to others. This got me searching for art about windows, and three photographs in the Welland Collection caught my eye. The first is a photo taken in 1935 by Elsa Bing, depicting a young girl named Michelle inside a house, parting the voluminous, lightweight curtains to look out the window. We can't tell what she's looking at, but the photo gives us a clear view of Michelle herself. I'm not sure who this girl is, but I appreciate the way Bing captured the childlike quality of her dress's upturned collar and sheared smock, her short hair, and her knee-high socks. She hugs her doll to her side by the head, probably not to be parted with the whole day. The way she stares out the window reminds me of the longing that many of us are feeling to be able to go play outside. The second is another photo by Ilsa Bing, this time taken from the outside, showing a window in an old stone building with grapevines hanging down next to it. The window has wooden panes and is protected with metal bars that create a layered grid of shadows on the window itself. This window captures the feeling of entrapment that accompanies some social isolation. The Jewish Women's Archive says that Ilsa Bing's photographs convey a strong sense of time continuing, not as a moment frozen. For me, there is a need to remember that now time is continuing rather than freezing in place. The third work of art that struck me in my search for windows was Spencer Finch's The Outer from the Inner, Emily Dickinson's Bedroom, Dusk. Finch is a Hamilton College alumnus and much of his work deals with effects of light. This work takes a fascinating look at a fairly famous window, Emily Dickinson's window overlooking the back garden at her home in Amherst, Massachusetts. In this series of seven prints taken at dusk, the light slowly changes as the sun goes down, so we are first given a view into the artist's backyard with its towering oak trees in the midst of seasonal transformation from green to orange. With each photograph marking the passage of a few minutes, the view changes to reveal the artist's bedroom reflected on the glass. The title of the series, The Outer from the Inner, Emily Dickinson's Bedroom, Dusk, tells us that the artist has taken up the poet's own position at her writing desk, looking out at the incremental changes of each day. The writer's desk symbolizes the quiet, creative space that is taking shape on some of these long days of remote work and social distancing. Recording and sharing our creative ideas and reflections with each other is our strongest source of connecting these days, fostering hope for the day we'll be able to emerge and reconnect in the future.